Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health struggles using the blood work you already have right here on this podcast, but also in my new book, Why Are My Labs Normal? Go grab it on Amazon and let me know you love it and appreciate the knowledge by leaving a review for both the book and this podcast. In fact, this July, we are having a contest. This contest is for practitioners and every practitioner who participates will receive my new step-by-step guide, how to attract the right clients and build your business with social media and live workshops, not paid ads. There will be three grand prize winners who will receive free access into my next master blood work live and virtual event, which is a value of $1,200 each. To get inside this contest and giveaway, you will need to subscribe and review the podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. You can get all the details and join this contest at the link in the bio. Winners will be chosen at random for the grand prize and announced on the podcast on August 9th. So be sure to subscribe. Also, this season, season five, is going to be new directed more for practitioners on Thursday episodes. So Tuesday episodes will be as we all know and love. Thursday episodes are for practitioners and practitioners only for the most part. This podcast is also sponsored by my favorite supplement companies, Systemic Formulas and My Biome. Come join me inside their private Facebook group for practitioners called Systemic Formulas Clinical Nutrition. For everybody to learn more, join Systemic Formulas on Instagram. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. I have a great friend with me today, a great friend, colleague, who is in New York City, not New York City. New I'm York. a little bit north of it, but close. New York, are you in New York or New Jersey? I'm in New York. I'm about an hour or so north of New York City. So anybody in New York, New Jersey, that area, I mean, she's virtual too. Jessica Breek, right? Yes. Hi. I, I've never <laughs> asked you to how, to how to say your last name. I've just assumed this. It's, so I tell people it's like brick with a Y. It's bricky is how you actually say it. But but I get it all, all kinds of ways. So brick with a Y, bricky. Bricky. Okay. Yeah. Jessica Bricky. I've yeah. never said it that way right then. <laughs> I've known you for a long time. I know. That's okay. I have people that I've known for 25 years and they still don't get it right. So it's good. (laughs) Well, Jessica, 30 years ago, started as a massage therapist. Yes. And has done some massage therapy stuff, but we're going to walk through her journey because I want you to listeners, especially the practitioners to understand that just because you have this degree or this diploma doesn't mean you're stuck doing this the rest of your life. I'm a chiropractor. I haven't cracked necks or backs or arms or legs or for three years. I don't plan on doing it ever again. Um, I even make my husband go see a different chiropractor <laughs> and same with my dad. Like, <laughs> I make them go to someone who specializes in that. I specialize in this. Um, so Jessica, if you are, if you're listening and you're a health coach, a massage therapist, a registered dietitian, a chiropractor, a naturopath, whatever your background is, even in Western medicine, and you want out or you want to add in another tool to your toolkit, tune in because Jessica's going to teach you exactly what she did how she did it, and what the results were so that you can do the same thing. Welcome on, Jess. Thanks for having me. I love, listen, I love talking about my journey and how I got to where I am. So this is a lot of fun to share this with everybody that's listening today. Okay, begin. So, yeah, so back in college, it was a minute ago, um, I I started (laughs) working... (laughs) <laughs> I know. I started working for a chiropractor. I was going to school. Um, I had I was getting my bachelor's degree in food marketing and distribution. So I was seeing the other side of how we choose food, you know, like how how is it pa- packaged so we want to buy it? Where is it placed in the market so we want to buy it? You know, that was where I was coming from. I knew it wasn't where I wanted to be. I took a part-time job with a chiropractor of all things that was supposed to just be an assistance position. I had no idea what it meant. It didn't matter. I I needed, I needed spending money. I needed to have my supplement, my social life supplemented. So I took this job and as it turned out, she practiced, and you would be familiar with this. She practiced a method called Gonstead method of chiropractic. And um, it was 
with the way that she practiced, she needed somebody really hands on with her. So she taught me how to do medical massage in the office with her. And so here I am, a junior at a private college, falling in love with being with patients. I just knew that I didn't need that other degree. It wasn't what I had to finish it, but I didn't want to go that direction. Great background, though, to have as an entrepreneur later on down in life. Absolutely. I mean, I got an education. She had me read and mark her x-rays, like things that, you know, now I know many years later, licensing wise, I probably shouldn't have been doing that stuff. But I, like I said, I was just naively taking this job. Um, I shouldn't have been hands on with people, all those things that I was doing. But man, did I get the most incredible start to my career by being in the office with her. It was great. So um, I went on to uh, massage school eventually. I thought I was going to go to chiropractic school, but um, there were some tragic events that happened in my life that unfortunately prevented that because she was actually going to help me go through school. Um, she was assaulted, believe it or not, in uh, the city she lived in, and her hands were crushed in that assault. So oh my gosh, terrible. Um, and it changed not only her life, but my trajectory as well, because we had this plan of how I was going to go on and practice with her. But you know, in God's hands, it, everything for a reason that wasn't meant to be for us and for me. So I went on, um, I finished my other degree and went to massage therapy school. Now the massage school I went to also was not a traditional massage school. It was an Eastern based school. And at the time, um, and again, this is a long time ago there, you could just get like, most schools were like, <laughs> I'm, I'm old. <laughs> But most schools, you got the bare minimum, whatever the state requirement was, you could do it in a six month program, something like that. The school that I went to, um, they actually offered an associate's degree program. So it was two years of really intense. This was not your normal massage program, but also Eastern based. So we were split um, doing everything, tongue diagnosis and pulses and, you know, everything that was Eastern medicine and including having to take Tai Chi every day. Um, in addition to the traditional Western approach to the body and massage therapy. Um, so I got another degree doing that, which was great. And I practiced privately since. So that was in 1994 that I went back to school, I think, if that was correctly. And I've been in private practice since. Um, about 10 years ago, my middle son, who had been six since he was, he's now, he's going to be 21. Um, gosh, it probably isn't even longer than that, but not that that matters. He got really sick and we tried everything. And I just knew that there was something else out there that I needed for him to heal that I wasn't finding. We were doing that whole, like, you know, like people that you see in practice every day, like I see in practice every day that go into doctor to doctor to try to figure out what the heck is wrong. Um, and it took years before I found his diagnosis um, and also the right form of treatment for him. And in that form of treatment, we were sitting in a practitioner's office and she was, um, she was doing muscle testing and she was doing all these wonderful things with supplements and diet and all this. And I can remember this feeling coming over me of, I need to do this. I need to share what she is doing with the world. I have to not only um, do this for my family and myself, but I need to, I need to be a bigger voice for alternative care. So that started me again, going back to school. Um, and I went back to school for holistic nutrition at that point um, and a, a college out in California. So that was about 10 years ago that I did that. And I have done um, in practice both massage therapy and nutrition since. But there's probably a lot of people that are listening right now that have gone to school to be a dietitian or a health coach, and they're finding that um, maybe they're just not satisfied with either the results that they're getting or they're finding that people are coming to them very sick and they're not able to figure out how to really help them. Um, and that's where I began, you know, a year and a half ago, even, I mean, I'm 10 years and me too. I don't want to help people lose weight. That's not what I want to do. I want to have people be better, feel better, heal from what they can heal from. Um, and then that's when you came into my world and I was introduced to this whole idea of, well, let's use some actual labs and incorporate that into the practice. That was a game changer for me. So I've evolved a lot over the years in what I have done, but all of that comes into play now. So the 20 something years of just straight up massage therapy that I did still 
impacts everything that I do right now because I have so many, you know, hundreds and if not thousands of bodies that I put my hands on. Um, and it's taught me so much all, all the way back to school when I was not legally probably touching bodies. <laughs> Doesn't matter as long as you don't get caught, right? Right. And I didn't, thankfully. <laughs> Everything was good. I was under her license. So I guess in that sense, I was probably somewhat covered, but <laughs> yeah, things, things were done differently 30 years ago. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Yeah. You're doing massage, you're doing massage, you're doing massage, you start adding in nutrition. And you're thinking, especially since the last two years, COVID has basically flipped everything, flipped mm -hmm. the script. And I don't want to particularly say the negative stuff, but it's opened up a lot of doors. Yeah, for sure. It opened up the virtual doors tremendously. So you're in New York, but just like me here in Utah, I can treat anybody in all over the world. Yeah. And I do. I mean, I, you know, like you, I, I treat people all over the place. I work with people all over the place. So um, that's the beauty of what what it did bring. Right. All these great opportunities for all of us. I I've watched people do it over the years. I've kind of been a voyeur of all of the online businesses that have been happening. I've been a voyeur for a long time and I really didn't know how to dip my toe in, you know, where to begin, because it can be so overwhelming the idea of um, changing your practice or adding to your practice or building, and you just don't know where to start. I I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm a little bit older. <laughs> so for me, it was overwhelming because there was so much tech to learn. Oh my gosh, Instagram and TikTok and, you know, okay, Facebook, I got it because that's the old people's site, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Facebook was no problem for me to learn, but all these other platforms, you're like, this is what I have to learn all of this in addition to all the other, you know, how to make it actually a working, functioning business. It was hard. It was a lot. It was a big adjustment to learn all that, but not impossible and fun to learn. What platform do you feel works best for you now? For, um, for treating and working with people, you mean? Yeah. For like building your clientele, what would you say? <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting. So I still think for me and for my demographic, Facebook is best for me. I get the most out of that. Um, and that might still be my comfortability because I'm still the most comfortable with Facebook. So I'm better with it. I'm getting better with Instagram. Facebook is definitely still my go-to because yeah. it was, you know, started at all. And we were all so comfortable with it personally. But now to get into the business... Facebook's still my jam. I feel like I can do more within Facebook, right? So we know that in Facebook, not only can I get the, the social media stuff going out there, but then you can have your groups that you can talk to privately. You know, you have all that other stuff that you can set up within there that you, uh, well, if you can do it within the other platforms, I don't know how to do that and I'm not utilizing it. Um, I will move all of that stuff into the Facebook groups. If I'm, if I'm capturing anything from Instagram, um, then I will bring them into the Facebook stuff. But so Facebook is definitely group? say that again. I'm sorry. You have a Facebook group. I do. I have a couple of Facebook groups. So the free, the, the one that everybody can just come on into is, um, uh, Oh gosh, you would, I <laughs> holistic help for autoimmune. What is that? Jeez. You know what? Isn't that terrible that I don't know the name of that because it's so, um, Stay on the spot. That's hold on a minute. No, that's okay. Because it's a long name and it's a really ridiculous name. Um, holistic support for women with autoimmune and thyroid disease. That's what it is. Sorry about that. I needed to take a look at that. It's a long name. I wish I really need to shorten that. Well, it's hard with Facebook groups because there literally are millions there are millions. And, you know, also because I really want to be specific that I want to work within that group. I want to work with women um, who are dealing with Hashimoto's and thyroid um, autoimmune in general. So the title needs to be a little bit more specific to capture those people that are just out there searching for help. You know, you put all those words in there and that helps that. So that's why it's so long. And I forget, <laughs> I forget what it's actually called. So if you are listening to this, go join her Facebook group, Holistic Health Support for Women with Autoimmune and Thyroid Diseases. And, and as this is more for practitioners, I want to touch on two things. One, the fact that you just said, I want to dial in who this Facebook group is for. Having a niche is important. Yes. And number two, let's re rework the 
how you've blended all of them together, kind of what your packages are like. So whether it's massage therapy, nutrition, and the blood work, and how that all looks from a business standpoint. So the, those who are listening can take the tools that they have in their toolkit, package it all up, and now you're getting better patient results, and you can charge more for it because your value is higher, your results are better, and bam. So yeah. one having a niche. Yeah. And I think that was probably one of the hardest things for me to work on. Um, because as a healer, we want to heal everybody. We don't want to say no to anybody that's coming forward that's struggled with, you know, going doctor to doctor and they, you know, they've been doing it for years and they feel lousy and they don't have any answers. Nothing's working. You don't want to say no to that. And privately, I don't, you know, anybody can come to me with and present anything and we'll work our way through that. But when you're putting yourself out there on social media, when you're putting yourself out there virtually, it's best to have whatever it is that's going to be your specialty that you're going to dial in on. And for me, because I come from a place where I have personally dealt with autoimmune and thyroid dysfunction, that was something that I felt I was really comfortable with when I was deciding because I could bring my own personal story into um, helping other people because I got it. I understood where they were coming from and I probably made all the same moves that they have made along the way. So it was a hard to wrap your head around the idea of like one idea, you know? Yeah. But it's important. If you're out there treating everybody, then you're not going to, you're not going to be good at any particular thing as far as the marketing goes. Well, marketing but everything really, I remember this conversation I had with some colleagues, some classmates at the time um, in school. And they were like, Hey, why don't you attend all these uh, conferences, all these events every weekend? And I said, because I don't want to be the jack of all trades, right? I don't want to dip my toes into all this stuff that we can. I want to be freaking amazing at one or two, maybe three things. So people know, Hey, if you want help with this, you go see this girl. Absolutely. And, and not only does it change your trajectory as your practice going from this steady to like, now you're like really building a practice, but it's attracting that the right people that you feel comfortable with that you are now the expert in. Like you think about it, people go to cardiologists, they go to rheumatologists, they go to endocrinologists, they go to all these ologists, they're specialists in their yeah. field. Yeah. Guess what, guys? Specialists get paid more money. <laughs> Become the specialist in your field, and now your value is higher. Yeah. Now, marketing is simple and easy because you know exactly who you're talking to. You're not having to do one post on autoimmune and then one post on thyroid issues and then one post on leaky gut and then another post on infertility. Like, it just makes your marketing so much simpler to where people will know who you're talking to and how you can help them. And that doesn't mean in saying that, that if I am specializing in autoimmune doesn't mean that some of those things aren't going to have multiple little, you know, veins that are going to come off from that, that you want to, okay, I specialize in autoimmune, but today I do want to talk about leaky gut. That doesn't, they, they go together as most Wait, of us know. Those are all in autoimmune. Right. But, but you don't have to feel like you're out of your league by doing that just because you've chosen this one, you know, kind of umbrella it's an umbrella for you to have these other little subcategories down the way. But, but I think, you know, it is, it is a very hard concept as a healer to step in and be comfortable with this idea that you're going to become really good with one or two, or as you say, maybe three things. It's really hard. It goes against who we feel like we are naturally. Yeah. And it goes against who we are naturally as a, as a helper. We want to help everybody. We don't want to turn people yeah. away. And I will tell you in the last two weeks, it's June 13th. I've probably turned 20 people away. And when I say turn 20 people away, I get them connected with the right individual. Right. So I know uh, Dr. Greg Mojan does Lyme and really chronic instances like that. You know, I know Danny does keto and carnivore. I know. So there's a lot of these people who I'm like, okay, I don't work with practitioners or with patients anymore. I'm more helping practitioners and doing all that, that stuff. So I'm going to put all my energy in that. Meanwhile, I have this following and these people who really know, like, and trust, they want someone who can read the blood work and do the things I do. Well, now I can get them to the right practitioners to do that, who I've trained. Right. So you're actually doing yourself a favor by 
guiding somewhere, some someone somewhere else if you're not the best fit. Absolutely. That energy will come back around and where if you're worried about your bank account, really dive in deep and say, I'm going to focus on this person. I'm going to put all my messaging into this person and then watch as the gates open up and the flood comes through. Yeah. And I think you touched on something there too. The money mindset is also a hard thing. So I've been very fortunate in my practice that, you know, my husband's a retired NYPD. He's had a difficult but long career as a police officer. And guess what? Now he's retired. There's a pension. If I don't work a day in my life, there will not not be food on my table. I may not have a cushy lifestyle, but price. we are oh, going to eat. 15 gallons, yeah. dollar per gallon. Well, this, <laughs> that's oh, that's oh. a whole nother story. <laughs> We are starting to have conversations in my house where, you know, all the kids are home from college and I'm like, listen, guys, I've never had to really think about groceries ever before, but we're going to talk about like making sure there's no waste in the house. So (laughs) there is a little conversation going on, but, but my point is this, I have always been fortunate enough that I've never had to leave my practice in it from a point of desperation, from a point of having to put that food on the table, from having that money be the driving force behind how I Um, work. And I know that I'm fortunate in that way. But to your point, because I've been able to sit in that seat, you're absolutely right. If you can just be comfortable and know your, know your worth, which is also very hard. um, And, and know that the content and everything you're doing with good intention, you are going to, that is all going to come back to you. But I think when you lead with this, I got to make money, I got to do this and this desperation that comes across to people and you might not be as successful financially as you want to be when you're leading with this desperate money mindset. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. I was listening to Matthew McConaughey's book called green lights this past week. Um, not sure if I would recommend it yet. There's a lot of F bombs in it that (laughs) hard and, and he just, just so you guys don't like run and go like, Oh, she recommended it. He narrates it. Matthew McConaughey narrates it. And it's just like, it's like, I'm not, I'm not in a play. I'm not in a theatrical. I'm just listening to a book. Yeah. But anyways, so he says in this scenario, when he first got into Hollywood, um, he went to an agent's house, I think. Now don't correct. Don't get me wrong on the story, but just listening, remembering, remembering it here as I remember it. And he goes into the agent's house And, um, he says, you know, I need to, I need an agent. I need to have someone who's on my side. And this person, this, who was an agent, not his at the time. Um, he said, well, there's your first problem. You cannot need Hollywood. Hollywood will cut you up, spit you out, chew you up and just throw you on the streets. So he actually made Matthew McConaughey with his sons, go to Europe and experience life for a few weeks and not need anything. Mm, Then when he came back, the need was gone. And then it just started happening. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really true. And I think the more I even let go of that, the more it comes to me, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm in this place of um, transitioning right now because, because I've been doing massage for so long, I'm tired. My body's tired. I need to see, I don't want to see as many people in my office anymore. The, you know, my energy tank is, is low as far as that output. So I'm shifting. And the more that I pull back, the more that I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do as much, the more that's on my doorstep. I'm not kidding. Like the more that I pull back, the more I've let go. It's like, there's, 20 more people that are calling me and I'm, I have the massage therapist in my area are doing freaking fantastic right now because I'm just, I just keep putting them out, you know, because you're referring them out and you're not sucking on and, and draining yourself. Right. And you're right. There are other massage therapists in your area that they will be happy to go see. And so walk us through this, this transition that you've been making. So, you know, as I mentioned, I I started this years ago because of my son's illness and this kind of awakening of needing to share, um, even though my original schooling was in, was Eastern based with massage therapy, I still wasn't really ready to accept all of that, that idea. I was still very Western minded. Um, it still took a long time for me to come to a place of realizing, um, 
how many alternative things are out there to share with everybody. So that began this kind of tingling, this awakening with me. Um, but then I also realized that, you know, my the job that I do is extremely physical. It's hard. And I don't have uh, and an haven't had a normal practice for a long time. I'm very blessed. I think the average lifespan of a massage therapist is five to seven years. And as I said, I've been doing it a minute longer. Um, and I have a two month waiting period to get into my office, which I've had that for years and years and years. And I'm really fortunate to have that. Um, but I knew that at some point I needed to not do that anymore physically, but I still wanted to help people. I still wanted to treat people in whatever capacity. There's not many people, many occupations out there where you can be a healthcare provider and have quality time with somebody. And I still really enjoy that one-on-one -on -one with somebody that I still can get by doing um, a nutrition consult by going over their labs with them, I can sit there and talk with them for an hour and a half or two hours or whatever it takes with me. And I still have that same connection that I have in the, in the therapy room when I'm doing massage. I just knew that I needed to make transitions so that physically I wasn't doing that. Uh, so as I said, the first step was for me, I went back to school for nutrition, but it was so geared towards um, weight loss you know, because as I think as Americans, especially we are just so we're, we're pretty, we're a pretty vain bunch. Um, I'm, I'm not immune to that, but that's what well, so well, many people think they want. want. Yeah. Everybody thinks that they want weight loss and yep. it, it pisses me off. Right. Like, Cause have, it's, it's, it's yeah, only a piece ahead. of the story and the real goal should be, I want to get healthy. Right. Right. I mean, how many people have you met in your life that are, you know, tiny, tiny, skinny things and if you sit down with them at a meal with them and they're eating, you can't believe what they're putting in their body and then they'll, they'll chase it with a, you know, like some sort of alcohol, like that's what they drink every night and having a pack of cigarettes a day or whatever. And you look at them and you think, gosh, they're so skinny. That's what I want to look like. But you don't know what their internal health is like. Yeah, inside they're not. And then right, right. The it's, it's never good enough. Right. And I had to come to terms with that also in my own life. So that's another thing I bring to the table, right? So I have been up and down in my way as I have dealt with autoimmune. I know what all this stuff is now, um, but I didn't then in all the years that I battled my way up and down and various sizes and different stress points in my life and, and so on and so forth. But I knew that that wasn't the place for me to be. It didn't make me happy for people to come in here and weigh and measure and let's set up a meal plan. Like for me, it was boring and I got, there was nothing that stimulated my mind and um, it just, it wasn't enough for me personally. So I started to look at other alternative ways that I could help people. Um, and it's been a journey. It has not been something that all of a sudden I overnight woke up and knew that I wanted to work with people with autoimmune disorders, um, that I didn't want to work with weight loss. You know, it, it definitely took me experimenting with each thing to know what was right for me. And I'm not poo-pooing people that are out there that are doing weight loss work because there's a lot of people doing weight loss work that understand that it isn't just about the number on the scale and they're doing really good work and helping people. And in doing so, they're going to help all these other health crises that they have going on. Um, I just knew that it wasn't for me to go that road. Um, and, yeah. And so in that discovery, you know, I'm looking, was, I've been, had been on the search for a long time to figure out what was the right place for me. And that's when I believe it or not, I found, um, I had a client that came in and signed up for, um, somebody you and I know mutually or know of that they did a program for them. And, I was so fired up about this particular program because it was um, a lot of money and then they were dropped, like just dropped at the end. So it caused me to get to the root of like, what is this? And that's how I discovered the supplement, one of the supplement lines that you use that I use systemic um, and brought me into this, the most incredible community of people and products and everything. And I'm not a salesperson. I'm never going to be the person that's going to go out there and say, buy this, 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 and this, even though next to me, I have some shelves, some things on my shelves. I'm not a salesperson. It's not what I want. I want to believe in a product and use it for what it needs to be used for and move on. And through all of that, you were coming into that group at the same time and started teaching people about, you know, labs. And that's when it clicked. 
that's when I thought that's the missing piece that I'm missing, how I can actually do something for people. Because I say now my line is, I use this all the time. My line all the time is um, I will not work on with people that are just looking for weight loss. I will not give you an idea of a supplement plan without you actually coming in and doing a full consultation and without doing lab work. I will not do it because it is like shooting darts at a dartboard with a blindfold on. I'm not about guessing and I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste your money because most likely by the time you've already gotten to me, you've done that. A, Ton, you know, a trillion times over. You've put thousands of dollars and probably years into stuff that hasn't worked for you. And I don't want to guess. So that's what began the journey with realizing, oh my gosh, there's so much here that people either already have or can get from their labs. And that is the piece that was always missing. And um, man, I've taken that and run with it. It's been great for me and for my practice. Now, what she just mentioned here was, I want to talk about opening up some doors and walking through them. Um, Systemic Formulas, which is the sponsor of this podcast and my go-to supplement uh, company, Jessica's as well. So I don't even remember how I got into this exactly, but I live 10 minutes from their warehouse, from their home base really so uh, in the beginning any supplement i needed rather than paying for shipping i would go down and grab them or i would send my um, receptionist to go down and grab them it's like five minutes down the street from my brick and mortar practice that i once had and i would just say you know numbers never lie numbers never lie right and i got into this this idea of a of a niche i remember the first time i got asked about this niche concept well what do you want to specialize in and my first thought was i want to do infertility because I'm in Utah, people like to have lots of kids. And when they have a struggle, when they struggle to have kids, it's a big deal. It's a big problem. Even It is, is that way anywhere, anywhere. But and then I realized I really don't want to do this. <laughs> Saw a couple of yeah. infertility cases. No, 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 no. This is not for me. Um, and then I got into this blood work. And labs always made sense to me. Even in college, mm -hmm. we took one phlebotomy course and one course on labs and, I, and all of my colleagues were asking me questions about it. Um, so they've just always come natural. These right. numbers and found in, in our blood work. And I found this easy way to one, interpret it and then two, to teach it. And I got an offer um, from the people at Systemic Formulas, Mike specifically, he said, hey, I have this Facebook group. Would you be interested? And this was like two months after COVID hit or three months after COVID hit. So everything got shut down. There were no more conferences. There was no in-person stuff. Um, and they had this Facebook group of it was around 11, I would say, actually in the beginning, it was more around 900 practitioners, if I remember right. And this was probably in the middle Q3 of 2020. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, sure. What the heck? I've never done it before. Teaching clinicians now my own colleagues and mind you i'm three years postgraduate so it's not like right. i have 30 years on my on my belt and i'm teaching these people who have been in the business for 20 25 30 years and i just kept saying you know every time i go get supplements numbers never lie numbers never lie and it was just this thing of mine that caught attention and it caught attention fast which is why this yeah. podcast is also done when it's done so I just want the whole point of me telling you guys this was there was a door that opened up and it freaked me out to have to, the original plan was to get on Facebook and go live on Facebook twice a week. And then I said, okay, that's a lot. Let's do one time a week. Mm -hmm. So I would do go live one time a week, whether it was Tuesday or Wednesday, there were times where I would have my little kid sitting on my lap because the babysitter fell through that day or whatever. But at first it was this, scary thought of here I am this 30 year old girl getting on a Facebook live in front of the camera, which I wasn't very good at doing at that point in my life and keeping the teaching fellow colleagues. Yeah. So when you get a door that opens up, walk through the door, even if it scares the living daylights out of you, because you never know what opportunities will come down the road from yeah. that. Now, that was two years ago. What did I just say? I am no longer treating practitioners. I'm helping clinicians. B 
because of that door that I walked through. So I just want to empower you guys that if there's something that scares the living daylights out of you, you should probably do it. Every step that I have taken scared the crap out of me. Every single one. Every time I went back to school, every time I signed up to take a, you know, invest money in my business, every single time it's been like, oh my gosh, this is the right thing. It has scared me to death and it's paid off. There's been a couple things I've tried that haven't been ideal, but that's okay. What my takeaway was, maybe I didn't sell as much as I wanted to based on whatever it was that I did. Maybe that didn't happen that way, but I still take away an enormous amount of learning power that I will apply in another way somewhere else, even if it didn't necessarily work out the way that I thought it might be. But every single thing that I have done has scared the heck out of me. I've been comfortable in my practice for a really long time to change direct, to completely change and go virtual and be out there, like you say, on camera, that's hard. That's that I still get nervous sometimes when I do a live, when I go live, not nearly like I used to. I'm checking my hair. Do I make sure I don't have any salad in my teeth? You know, <laughs> something that later on is going to be super embarrassing. Um, but it, it's hard. But I can't thank you enough. I can't thank systemic enough. Um, it literally was all all of these things, you know, I, I don't want to say that they were um just coincidence because I don't believe necessarily anything is coincidence. I just paid attention. I paid attention to all those things, all those doors, as you say, that opened up. I paid attention and said, okay, let's go for it. Let's walk through. And thank goodness I have a partner that, you know, sometimes he looks at me and he's like, again, now <laughs> this is what we're going to do. <laughs> but he's never, never not supported me. <laughs> you just never make up your mind. Like you keep telling me like, this is the thing. This is the, I'm like, it is the thing right now. <laughs> um, love it, love it. Okay, really, as we conclude here, Jessica, one, the blood work's been a game changer for you. And you guys it are a therapist. You don't need a background to understand this blood work stuff. I make it so, so simple. So be sure to come to find when the next Master Blood Work Live event is. I know, I mean, this is June 13th. This isn't going to go out for another month or two. But we're doing one on June 29th. Pay attention. There'll be one in August, one in September, somewhere down the lines where I we literally spend four and a half hours together busting out all of the blood work so you can run with it the very next day. And as a massage therapist and a nutritionist, she's now incorporated that for one, better results. And then two, just because we finish up here, will you explain to the listeners your package? How do you package all of that up? And then if you wouldn't mind sharing the price tag. Right. So my um, massage therapist is completely separate. I don't bring that into the nutrition side. Um, so the nutrition, there's, there's not, there's, sorry, is that more because phas- of clientele prefer? No, I'm, fa- I'm phasing it out. I'm, I'm, I'm slowing down just because physically I need to do that. Um, I need it. I know, but I want, I, I don't want to let go of that completely. I still love it. I still love what I do. It's just, I'm tired. Uh, so I ha- I'm still doing it, but I'm really starting to, I'm really have been focusing on building the other side of my practice, which is the nutrition side of my practice. So I do see a few people for that in my office once in a while. Most of it is done virtually online and there is no options for me. There is one option. If you want to work with me, you have to, we have to do it with labs. That's it. So I do that. Um, people will pay, they pay $4.95. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. There's no option. If you if 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 you don't want to do that and you're not willing, if it's not the right price point for the person, I'm totally cool with that. You are I've been in the game long enough. My feelings don't get hurt. If I'm not the right match, if my personality isn't the right match, if I don't you don't feel like my qualifications are enough for you, I know I'm enough. I know I know enough. And if I don't, I also know that I can refer you out and I'm gonna make sure that you get the right care. But I'm so comfortable now where I sit and what I offer that I don't bat an eye. When I started doing this, I set my price and then I gave a discount because I felt so bad. Like, oh, like, how can I charge this? But here's the reality of this. And you know this from, you know, I know you're doing, you've really phased out and you're doing clinicians. But when you bring somebody into your office, you have um, to go over and chart all their labs, right? And it depends. If you have one set of labs, well, you could get lucky and that might take you 15 minutes or 20 minutes to do that. 
Or they could, for me, I say, I'll go back seven, eight years. We'll go back and we'll look for these tent trends. And if somebody's bringing me and they've been really sick and they've got a ton of labs, well, I could be sitting down doing their labs for two hours. Depends, right? It depends. Depends on what I'm doing. Um, I try not to do that much time into that, but every once in a while I have a stickler. Yeah, but anyway, I have yeah. that. Yeah. And I have, um, then I do a consult with them. So that takes me an hour and a half to two hours to go over those labs, explain them in detail, which that is the thing that they are the most grateful for. And every single time I'm like, why haven't doctors ever taught this to me? You know, you hear that over and over again. Why haven't they seen this? Why haven't they taught this? Well, they don't have time. And that's a whole nother discussion. Um, but anyway, I charge four ninety five for them to come in for their initial consultation with me. And that is for me to look at their labs. Yeah, that's for me to look at their labs, have a consultation with them. And then I will give them what I would suggest for um, a nutrition plan and then supplements that are just that, a supplement um, to support whatever it is that we're trying to do. Um, so, you know, supplements, there are aside from a handful of supplements that I think that everybody probably should take. Mostly, I think we should take them for what we need them for and then move on to the next thing or the next phase or whatever it is that we're doing. And I'll give them a six month plan and say, OK, this is good for six months. But in six months, we want to look at your labs again and you're going to come back in and we're going to add to this. Now, at that point, I'm not charging them the full four four ninety five because we've done the initial stuff. So this is just a follow up. So my follow up for them is then um, 350 for them to do that because it's still time for me to do that. It's still a new plan that I'm giving them. Um, and I'm still, you know, they're not going to sit down and ask me 15 minutes worth of questions. We're still probably going to spend 45 minutes going over the updates and whatever it is. So it's still, a, you know, a, you know, a decent amount of money that I'm charging for the follow up. But that's, that's another requirement. I'm not going to go beyond six months because I don't know have we done everything right? Have you responded to it enough? Do we need to continue doing what we're doing? It, it all depends. But, um, you know, people would like to go longer. You could give a 12 month, 18. I will tell them it's probably going to be a 12 month to 18 month plan up front so that they know that they're going to be with me and doing that. So that's, that's how I handle the virtual. That's smart. Taking it one step at a time. And that's first step is the six months with the phase is included in that, but then you reassess and you rework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how because much, it changes. Yeah. How often do they meet with you during that six months? So they, it depends. Now people have access to me um, and I tell them, you know, if you, if you have a question and, you know, especially as you know, in the industry, supplements are hard to come by. Like we're struggling with um, having everything we need. So they will reach out to me and I'll either email with them or, you know, some people I do give my cell number, we'll text if they have questions, especially in the beginning and get them going, but I give them everything. I give them everything to get them up and running. Um, a follow-up with me is expensive and I tell them that it's kind of pricey. So that's when I kind of lead them into my membership program. So I do have a membership program that they pay me monthly. And then inside that membership program, that's where they're going to get more access to me. So I'm going to coach them every week because we do need to be with them and have them stay engaged and stay motivated. Um, figure out how to start new routines that they're going to be able to stick with. Um, I have experts that come in once a month that do another coaching call. And so they pay me there monthly once they've done this. That doesn't mean they have to, but I highly encourage them. And, you know, I try to get people enrolled in that so that they can stick with it and have another source of rolling income um, outside of just that initial, you know, big $500 bump for, for that. And in addition to that, then there's an additional supplement that come, um, supplemental of in income supplement that comes along with the actual supplements that they're purchasing. That's not my big push. That's not my big moneymaker, but it certainly adds to everything that I do. Yeah. And you drop ship everything from systemic formulas, right? Most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time it's drop shipped to them. Um, I'm, um, as you know, that I'm working on changing how I do that right now. Um, and so that as well, when we're, when this goes live and people will know that my, my store will be open so they can go and everything will be drop shipped to them. But otherwise I, prior to this, I give them my code to get in and then they can order it that way. And I don't want to be hands on with that. You know, when I just. Cares, they will be live on her Shopify store. Yes, it's very exciting. Yeah, so where can they find that? So you can go to my website, root reasons.com uh, backslash shopping, and they can find this, my supplements there. But my membership, 
um, the application to apply one-on-one -on -one to work with me. And my shopping is all going to be there at root-reasons.com. Cool. All right. Patients, if you're interested in personalized care, go see Jessica at root-reasons.com. Practitioners, go check it out and see if you can glean any more golden nuggets from Jessica and how she's worked from massage therapy to nutritionist. And now she's more of a blood work specialist weaning out of that massage therapy world. So whatever you are, whether you're a chiropractor, naturopath, massage therapist, health coach, registered dietitian, uh, there's an option for you. I don't crack backs or necks or arms or legs. You don't do need to. <laughs> you don't need to either if you're a chiropractor. There's other ways. I hope you guys learned so much on this 40-ish uh, minute conversation. Thank you so much, Jessica, for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. Again, guys, go check her out at root-reasons.com and then join her Facebook group, Holistic Health Support for Women with Autoimmune and Thyroid Diseases. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Kylie. I'm so glad you joined me today on this episode of the Beyond the Diagnosis with Dr. Kylie podcast. Remember, if you're a practitioner, you need to get inside this contest and giveaway. Check the link below to get all the details and you can get my free step-by-step -step guide and get placed inside the possibility of becoming a grand prize winner and receive free access into my next Master Bloodwork live and virtual event. It's coming up soon. So grab everything you need at the link below, join the contest, get the goodies, and I'm here to help you. Why? Because we're all in this together. Come join me inside the Systemic Formulas Facebook group for practitioners. It's also a private group called Systemic Formulas Clinical Nutrition. Everybody else, go join Systemic Formulas on Instagram, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining me.